Hi everyone, we're going to do a standard normal problem using our calculators, our TI calculator, and also estimating the answer. So this problem here is about baby's weights. It's normally distributed. We have a mean of 3,420 grams and a standard deviation of 495 grams. Apparently, there is um, special treatment for babies or for babies that less that weigh less than 2450 grams or more than 4390 grams. And basically, they want to know what is the probability of babies who do not require special treatment because they have birth weights between 2450 grams through 4390 grams. Keyword here is normally distributed which means that it's going to be a normal distribution type problem. And the mean and the standard deviation are the population mean and the population standard deviation. In this case, the random variable is going to be X, which represents what we're studying. We are studying those babies that do not have treatment or no treatment. One thing I do like to identify is what is the probability that we're looking for? Well, we're looking for um, the, it says right here, what is the probability of babies that do not require, right, special treatment? That's between this range, 2450 through 40, 4390. The X represents the random variable again, no treatment. The no treatment group goes from here to there. Okay. Next thing that uh, you probably don't see a lot, but I like to estimate the answer. And one thing that teachers do like you to do is to um, draw the normal and get kind of like an understanding of what the answer will be. In this case, I have this, type, this template. Now this template allows me to connect the z-score with percentile and the empirical rule. In some uh, my period my previous videos, I talk a little bit about the connection between the z-score, the percentile, and the empirical rule. But basically, we have the z-score here, which connects to the different placeholders of the empirical rule. Okay, so twenty four fifty through 4390. And one of the things I like to do is to, in my template, write down the mean of my random variable, which is 3420. And then the spread, right, is 40 of uh, 495. So I'm going to add 495 to 3420. I get um, 3915. I'm going to add another 495, and I get 4410. And then I'm going to go subtract 495 from 320, gives you 2925, and then subtract another 495 from 3295 to get 43, I'm sorry, 2430. So the mean is 3420 from the word problem but as you know you can go above the mean by one standard deviation or two standard deviations or below the mean by minus one standard deviation or minus two standard deviations and that's what the z-scores also represent so as you can see the random variable x with a mean of 3420 is also a z-score of zero or Two standard deviations from the mean, right, is 4410, but it's also connected to two z-scores, which is the same thing. Okay, so 2450 through 4390, this is the area that we're looking for right here. And so I can have an approximation. See, I know that from negative two standard deviations to negative one standard deviations is 13.5, but I didn't shade 13.5, all of it. I shaded about 12%. I'm estimating. 
As you can see, I shaded all of negative one to zero. That's 34%. And then from zero to one, I shaded another 34% right here. And then from one to, not two, but very close to two, but from one to two is 13.5%, but I didn't shade 13.5%. I shaded most of it. So 12%, 34, 34, 12% gives me 92%. Okay. Again, this might be a little bit tricky. And you might want to look at my previous videos. But again, what we're doing here when we're shading is we're visually seeing what's going on with the probability. That's one. And two, we're estimating the probability. How are, we, how are we doing that? Well, we have these values. Again, 13.5, 34, 34, 13.5. These values, I get them through the empirical rule. You've got to watch my previous videos. And the reason why I'm shading from here to here is because the word problem tells me I'm going from 2450 to 4390 and how do I know 2450 and 4390 is here because I used the mean and the standard deviation right to represent my random variable x and because I'm able to write it out here I'm able to figure out where the boundaries are yes that is a lot of information again why would you do that is because this way you can estimate the value. Right now, 92% is a way better uh, estimate and a way better, um, you should be able to get some credit. No, I can't promise you your teacher will give you any credit. But at least the understanding of the concept is that you are understanding that it's about 92% of the normal distribution or 92% of babies have no treatment. Now, this is not the true answer because what we can do is we can take out our calculator, uh, the TI calculators, TI 8384, and we can go to um, uh, the distribution button or, or second VARs and then go to CDF, normal CDF, and then pop in the lower bound, upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation, those four values, and you get an answer, 0 0.9499. So 94.99% of babies do not require special treatment. Our estimation was 92%, which was very close. So the thing is, these problems are not really hard to do uh, sure there there's a lot of parts to it um, word problems might be a little bit hard to know if it's less than greater than what the symbols are and such and of course you would have to understand those inequalities but in terms of setting up the problem is probably the hardest part but utilizing the TI calculator or use, utilizing some type of template uh, will give you a easier way to find the answer. Of course, you always have to write down what that percentage was that you discovered. Okay, so hopefully that's helpful.